Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. And welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're coming to you from Hogarth's campsite, proper camping, in Swaledale, which is just north of Keld. Coming up, we visit Keld, the highest village in Swaledale. We take a walk and find some lovely waterfalls. We check out Ruckins Park Lodge campsite before heading to Wainwath Force on the way to Hogarth's campsite, where we stay for the night. We also visit Raven Seat, made famous by the TV series Our Yorkshire Farm, and visit the source of the River Swale. So let's get cracking. Leisure bit is the way to go with David, Rachel and Roxy. Let's hit the road and explore. We pick up our journey after we've just headed over the A66 and we're going to take the A685 towards Kirby Stephen. But she moves like lightning and she counts to three. Then she turns out all the lights and says she's coming for me. And I put your hands up. This is a high. It's the Appleby Horse Fair at the weekend. So a number of people were making their way there. You can see them at the side of the roads. Speed camera van out on the right there. We're heading towards Kirby Stephen now, which is about four miles from where we left the A66 on the A685. Green, green girls, blue, blue sky. You better throw a party on the day that I die. Green, green girls, blue, blue sky. You better throw a party on the day that I die. We go together, Adam and Eve. We're going to make a left hand turn at the lights here and then we're going to make our way to the village of Nateby Here we're going to make a left hand turn and follow the B6270 for 9 miles towards Swaledale and Keld She said green green grass We start our tour in Keld in the Ruckins car park. There's toilets here, a washing up area, and there's also drinking water available. So here we are at the Keld car park. It's £2 for a short stay, or £3 for all day if you want to go fell walking, and an absolutely beautiful area. Plenty of parking spaces as you can see. It can get busy at periods though. So, worth making sure you arrive early if you fancy doing a walk. A little bit more information on Swaledale there. And something on Barnes. Let's pop the money in the box. Two pound for short stay. There's a little shop and tea room just next to the car park in Keld. Well worth checking out, especially if you've been for a long walk. As well as a tea room, it was a well-stocked small shop, which had lots of things which would come in handy, especially if you'd forgotten anything, 
Oh, are you just a bit thirsty? I fancied an ice cream. Keld's the highest village in Swaledale. You can head out to Keld down towards the river by just following the track, just pretty much straight on uh, if you're coming from the car park direction and then you can just make your way down. You can continue on walking towards Muka, uh, which we'll cover off in next week's video. And you can either go along the riverside or you can take the high route and then look down into the valley. And there's some cracking views, especially when the sun's out. The cow shed behind me has got a stone above the doorway which says 1687 and a name Alderson underneath it. That's very unusual for the cow shed and it's thought that it was actually brought from somewhere else and actually placed there. Rookin's campsite has two areas to camp in. There's an area over there which overlooks the valley this way. I um, thought I'd show you it from this angle. And then there's the bit that goes near the river. There are some electrical hookups available in the upper field. Just in the distance behind us there, you can see Keld Lodge. We passed it on the way down in the van. I think they do drinks and you can get some food there, but worth checking. About a quarter of a mile along from Keld, just under a quarter of a mile, you will come to this uh, signpost, which is the decision point. So you can go back to Keld that way, that way to Thwaite and Muka, and over the bridge to Crackpot Hall. If you head down this way, it's worth being particularly careful, especially if it's wet or icy, um, as it's fairly steep. And across this uh, bridge now, which takes us to the other side of the River Swale. There was some filming going on just near the waterfall above here. Further along the river from here is Kisden Fort. Well worth checking out, albeit access is a little bit tricky, so just be careful. Back up the hill. There's a handy little sign that points you back to the campsite and refreshments. I need it after that hill. Just up the road in Keld is the Keld Resource Centre. There's the old school museum. And this is the Rockins, which is Park Lodge campsite. It says to go through this gate and to check in at the farmhouse before you pitch. Let's go and take a look. So here we are at the Rockings campsite. What a beautiful little place. There's little barbecues and there's fire pits. They're right on the riverside. It's just really sweet. So that's the hill that you come down into the site. And as you can see on the riverside here, there's fire pits and barbecues. It looks like there's a little path up there to walk the dog, so we're going to go and explore. I've just come through the campsite and through the little dog walk through a little wood and you come out the most spectacular waterfall. Roxy's loving it. So this is the Rookings campsite. It's right on the river. They're all grass pitches 
no electricity, but there are showers, toilets, washing up facility, drinking water and refuse points up at the car park. There is barbecues and fire pits on each of the pitches. They're all directly on the riverside. Thing to note though, there is zero internet or telephone coverage down here. It's quite blissful to be honest with you. Oh dear. This tree swings. I'm not sure whether I should have a go. No, I better not. I'd rather go home with unbroken limbs, I think, today. Just behind me, you'll see the path that leads back up to the car park where you come in and out, where the showers and toilets are. This is where the drinking water is and there's also an additional uh, campsite here as well that you can park up so you're not actually on the river itself. Back up the hill to show you the toilets and showers. Behind me is the facility block. There is an indoor washroom, an outdoor wash-up area. There's two showers and plenty of toilets too. All clean and tidy. So there's our brief tour of Park Lodge campsite, or Rookins, in Keld and the village of Keld. Upper Swaledale's fantastic for walking, cycling, as well as many other outdoor activities with beautiful scenery and so many places to explore. Worth noting, unless you're in a very small vehicle and you want to turn right out of Keld, it's worth heading up the track we went in on rather than the one we've just passed. It's a really tight angle to turn. We had to go down to Thwaite to turn around and come back this way as we were heading back towards Hogarth's campsite. And on the way, we're going to stop at Wayne Wath Force and have a look at that. Get out of line. Load it up when the sun comes down. Get away, car for two young lovers. Just heading down for a quick look at Wayne Wath Force. There's not a lot of water in today. It's normally a lot more water coming down here. There's a couple of ways in to get down and have a look at the force. There is very limited parking, so you can either come in over there or the way we came in, which was just down this way. So here's one of the ways in and out. That was Wayne Wath Force. Right, let's crack on. We'll now head on to Hogarth's farm campsite, which we passed earlier, which is our home for the night. As well as the camping by the riverside, there's also this field you can see behind me here. Well, I hope I'm not going to bore you with this review of the facilities. It may take some time, so please bear with. Right, that's the facilities here. So there it's all grass pitches. There's no electricity. You just pick where you want to pitch. And the only thing it has got is a toilet. Well, it looks nice and clean, so that's good. I'm going to go and pay. Now I've raided my pocket money. We've got the pricely sum of £12. So it's £6 per adult. You can get water up at the farm, which is up the road there. Um, just where that car's going past, if you can spot it. And you need to open the gate to get into this side of the field. If the gate's not open, obviously. So here's where you pop up to pay, just slightly up the hill at Hogarth's farm. 
After paying for the campsite, I found that the chickens were following me. On the way back down, I spotted a hare in the field. After that, I fancied an explore and to go and visit Ravenseat, so I set the bike up and then made my way on. Any minute now, tearing past me, there'll be David on his bike. It's like the two to France or the two to Yorkshire already. But she moves like lightning, then she counts to three. And she turns out all the lights and says she's coming for me And I put your hands up, this is a heist And there's no one in here living gonna make it out alive Load it up when the sun comes down Getaway car for two young lovers Me and the girl straight out of town Over the hills and undercover, undercover, undercover She said Well there's something you don't see every day telephone box so we're going to make a right hand turn now and head down towards raven seat Unfortunately, it's close for winter. Remember coming here for a delicious um, scones, cream, and a cup of tea many years ago. If you've walked up from the campsite or you're walking back, you can cut down here. You can see the sign, footpath to Hogarth Bridge. Not far from the turn-off for the roads, there's this old quarry. I think it would make an absolutely cracking little campsite, mind you. Brilliant for a wild camp spot. If you walk through the quarry, you eventually come to Birkdale Tarn, which is worth a visit. And here's the public footpath, which is just over the bridge. Let's see over there campsites just behind us there and you can cut across to raven seat that way obviously not suitable for the bike so back at the campsite it was then time to make some supper so we fancied chicken fajitas so rachel what do you think of this proper camping malarkey it's really good. Listen to the birds singing. Look at the sun. Listen to the peace and quiet. Loving it. Brilliant. No internet signal. No phone signal. Bliss. What about you? Proper camping, isn't it? Proper camping. think mm. nice. what's it like mm. <laughs>
nice little walk to the source of the River Swale, where the uh, two becks converge and then make the River Swale. It's a nice little walk along to the source of the swale. Just head to it from the campsite and then just follow the tracks. So we actually need to cross over the bridge to follow the track down to the source of the swale. So we're now going to head down this way. Got the bridge just behind us there. See the sheep crossing the river there. Some old buildings there. Not sure if anyone lives in them anymore, but interesting. I'm not sure where Roxy's off to, as this is the point where we're going to turn around, as we found the source of the River Swale. So as you will have seen there, Roxy swam in the river swale and the two becks that form it. This is the point where the two becks form, uh, coming down that way and that way. And at this point, it becomes the river swale, heading off down that way, eventually joining into the Yore, the Ouse, and then ultimately going out to sea at Humberside. Out, out. We'll now head back. We've been to the source of the swale, so let's now head back to the campsite for a sandwich, and I think we'll have some sauce in that too. I can't get over how little water there is in the river. I've never seen it this low, not in a long time. Right, that's us back at the campsite. Lovely little stroll there to the source of the River Swale. I think I've earned myself some breakfast there. Give it a try. So Rachel, what have you thought of Hogarth's, which is just north of Kells, heading towards Kirkby Stephen? What have you thought of it? It's been a cracking little site. Very few facilities, but beautiful, relaxing, no internet, no phone signal, chill out, get back with nature. 
What did you think? I think it's a really good point on no, obviously no TV reception and phone signal because we're right in a valley here. But do you know what? It's really nice sometimes to switch off and I think it's the only site we've been to where there's been no coverage whatsoever and it's been absolutely cracking. What did you think of this in comparison to where you took me for our anniversary? Is this where you brought me? Yes. Okay, so we went to the Kippen Nook for our anniversary and we paid £105, including the dog and that I bought for the anniversary. And David's brought me here to Hogarth, so it's £6 per person per night and no charge for the dog. So £12 all in. How about that? <laughs> can't go wrong for that, can you? You can't. Proper camping. Proper camping. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye. When I was a young lad, we used to come past this campsite now and again. And I always used to think it would be lovely to stay there one day. And lo and behold, we've stayed there. Join us next time when we continue our Upper Swaledale off-grid tour. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing for some ideas for your next adventure. Die.